Grand Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till you're home from the hospitals and back from over there. Greetings, men. This is Lionel Barrymore welcoming you to a very special command performance. Tonight, we're celebrating the fifth anniversary of Armed Forces Radio Service, the organization that serves as the middleman in bringing you the best the entertainment industry has to offer. Yes, for five years, American servicemen and women throughout the world have been sending in orders for their favorites of stage, screen, and radio. And for five years, through the medium of Armed Forces Radio, the entertainment industry has responded to your orders with the finest array of talent ever heard on any network. I see many of your favorites, and mine, are here already to help us celebrate this great occasion, and I know that more will be dropping in. But right now, I'm looking at a lovely girl who has livened many a command performance for you, and I don't know of a better way to start our birthday show than with a song from Lena Romai. Brazil, the Brazil that I knew, where I wandered with you. Lives in my imagination. O Brasil samba que dá, bamboleu que faz quinga. O Brasil do meu amor, terra bem nosso senhor. Brasil, Brasil para mim, Brasil. Brasil, abre a cortina do passado, tira a mãe preta do cerrado, volta e regongo no congado, Brasil, Brasil, deixa cantar de novo o trovador. Corre a luz da lua, toda cantao do meu amor. Quero ver a sadona caminando, pelos alues arrastando, o seu vestido rendado, Brasil. Para mim, Brasil, para mim. Oh, oh, tomorrow was another day. The morning found me miles away, with still a million things to Dims the sky above, recalling thrills of our love. There's one thing I'm certain of: return. I will to old Brazil. Very fine, Lena. That entitled you to a big piece of our birthday cake. And speaking of the birthday cake, there's an old friend of ours. He's not only got his mouth full, but he's stuffing a big helping into the bags under his eyes. <laughs> oh, Fred Allen. I'm afraid he didn't hear me. He's walking into that phone booth. 
I wonder if these comedians are funny over the phone, too. Let's do a little eavesdropping. Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Autograph oranges, 10 cents a piece. Rochester, this is Mr. Fred Allen. I just got in from New York. Oh, hello, Mr. Allen. Mr. Benny ain't home. He's yes, in... I know that. Why don't you come on over for dinner, Mr. Allen? Mr. Benny's pet chicken is awful sick. <laughs> His chicken is sick? Uh, what's wrong with it? I'm frying it to death. <laughs> Well, Rochester, here's what I called about. Is there any chance of using Mr. Benny's room while he's away? Did you say use or rent? I get it. I tell you what, Rochester, I'll take the room, and when Mr. Benny gets home, I'll give him a check for whatever he wants. Give him a check? Well, yes. That kind of eliminates the middleman, don't it? <laughs> Well, how about this? I'll give you the check, and you can give it to Mr. Benny. Uh, how about this? You give me the cash and let nature take its course. <laughs> well, I don't see why we should be arguing about money, Rochester. After all, you should be glad to have someone around the house. You must be mighty lonesome in that big place there, all alone. All alone? Oh, Mr. Allen, come now. <laughs> Rochester, I hesitate to think what Mr. Benny will say when he gets home. It won't do for radio, will it? <laughs> I'm afraid not. Well, Rochester, I guess I won't uh, get much rest at the house of Benny with all your friends whooping it up around there. I'm inclined to agree. You're so right. So I'll just let the room go. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye, Mr. Allen. Whew. That was a close one. I nearly rented your room, honey. Honey? <laughs> Rochester, to whom were you just talking? Oh, that was my cousin Sylvester. Sylvester J. Honey. Uh, uh, good goodbye, honey. I mean, Miss Allen. Say, Fred, if you're through with your phone calls, I'd like you to introduce our next guest. Gentlemen of the AEF, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce our next guest, one of Hollywood's finest actors. Who is it, Mr. Allen? You'll find out, Portland. This man is a real actor. His diction, his every gesture, the way he lives and breathes a role. Who is it? The Academy Award winner, Mr. Paul Lucas. <laughs> Hello, men. What a reading you gave that line. Uh, it was nothing, Fred. Nothing, he says. What inflection on that nothing. What timing. You know, I'm going to pick up plenty of pointers tonight. By the way, Fred, what are you doing out here in Hollywood? Well, I'm here to make a picture, Paul, but uh, don't let it worry you. No, it, it won't, it won't. Uh, you see, I'm making a comedy. Mm, comedy? Yes. Like Jack Benny, huh? Mr. Lucas. If Jack Benny is a comedian, I, sir, am a fish peddler. I'll take a pound of mackerel. <laughs> Shall I... Shall I wrap it up or will you eat it here? <laughs> But, Paul, I'm glad to have this chance to talk to you because in my picture, I have one dramatic scene where I have to make love to the leading lady. Now, do you think you could give me a little coaching? Well, the main thing is to have confidence in yourself uh -huh. and be convincing. Mm -hmm. Now, for instance, let me hear you say, I love you. I love you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Gentlemen, please, after the program. <laughs> now, you stay 
out of this, Ken. I'm trying to win an Oscar. Oh, brother, if that wins an Oscar, I'm a fish peddler. Well, go across the hall. I'm working this studio. <laughs> That was grand. And, Fred, here's my address, just in case you get in any gefilterfish. <laughs> Say, have any of you seen Frank Sinatra? He's been a feature of countless AFRS shows, and I wanted him to sing a song for us here. I saw him a minute ago. Oh, there he is, wading into the cake. Well, he needs the nourishment. But I don't think it'd hurt him to sing a song for us now. Come on over, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> what is America to me? A name, a map, or a flag I see. A certain word, democracy. What is America? The house I live in, a plot of earth, the street, the grocer and the butcher, and the people that I meet, the children in the playground, the faces that I see, all races and religions. That's America to me The place I work in The worker by my side The little town or city Where my people lived and died The howdy and the handshake the air of feeling free And the right to speak my mind out That's America to me The things I see about me The big things and the small The little corner newsstand And the house a mile tall the wedding in the churchyard, the laughter and the tears, and the dream that's been a growing for a hundred and fifty years. The town I live in, the street. pavement of the city, or a garden all in bloom, the church, the school, the clubhouse, the million lights I see, but especially the people, that's a That was very scary. I have just been informed that there is a gentleman at our microphone in Washington who would like to add his message to our anniversary party. Men, it gives me great pleasure to present the Secretary of War, the Honorable Robert P. Patterson. It gives me great pleasure to participate in this special command performance to add my own appreciation for the work which has been done by the Armed Forces Radio Service on this fifth anniversary. During the past five years, its music, variety, special events, 
and particularly its news programs, have done much for the morale of forces overseas. That touch of home, which is essential to those in foreign service, I know, was welcome always and continues to be welcome. Our thanks go also to those thousands of entertainers who freely gave their time and talent to provide us with the performances for which they were noted. Without them, it would have been impossible to reach our objective the finest that American radio can bring to our troops. So congratulations to the Armed Forces Radio Service. May it continue its high standards as long as it is needed. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. And may I say that we of the entertainment industry are happy and honored to be called on to perform on the many Armed Forces Radio Service programs. And we will continue to do so as long as our troops are overseas and in the hospitals. Well, everyone seems to be having a good time at our AFRS fifth anniversary party. I see two gentlemen have just finally torn themselves away from the punch bowl. And now would be a good time to introduce them. George Murphy and Nelson Eddy. George, command performance has received thousands of letters during the past five years asking how this or that star began his career. A legitimate question that deserves some sort of an answer. As for me, I can't remember how I started or when. But, George, for a young man, you're a veteran trooper. You sing, you dance, and you act. Tell me, how did you get started in the entertainment field? I was a boy soprano. Say, that's strange. I was a boy soprano, too. Really? When did your voice change? The day I rode my bicycle into a brick wall with a lollipop in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't get my big break till radio came along. Well, now that's strange. I got my first break in radio, too. Well, thank you. It was one of those early morning programs. Oh, you mean the Sunrise Kids? Jokes and guffaws while you put on your drawers. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll never forget our first program. It went something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Brotherly Love Finance Company is on the air. And now we present those two snappy chappies, Murphy and Eddie, come to get you out of Betty. <laughs> If you should need money, we'll lend it Just borrow a thousand and spend it And if you don't pay us, we doesn't dismay us We just take your neck and we bend it <laughs> Well, 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 well Good morning, all you lucky listeners Good morning, Nelson Good morning, George Well, here we are Your old friends, the Sunrise Kid <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it, he's too happy <laughs> You miss me Yes, sir, we're the Sunrise Kids back on the air for the Brotherly Love Finance Company. And now for a word from our sponsor. Do you need money? <laughs> well, drop in at the Brotherly Love Finance Company. No interest, no collateral, no carrying charges, no signature. Just make the payments whatever you please. And when you're all paid up, <laughs> we let your wife out of the bear trap. <laughs> And now we bring you the correct time. For those who live in the East, 10 a.m. For those who live in the West, 7 a.m. For those who live in the Rocky Mountains. I get it's cold up here, isn't it? <laughs> so don't forget, when you're looking for a loan, come to the Brotherly Love Finance Company. Brotherly Love Finance Company, spelled backwards, is... I, uh, 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 slug him again, Charlie. He still owes us a buck. <laughs> And now to prove to you that the Brotherly Love Finance Company always gives a square deal, we have here in the studio with us four satisfied customers. Who's the first one? Ken Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter, what do you think of the Brotherly Love Finance Company? Well, I say it's wonderful. I say it's great. I say it's the most wonderful finance company in the world. And I'll keep on saying it, as long as they shove those hot needles under my fingernails. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And here's another satisfied customer, Mr. Don Wilson. Mr. Wilson, what do you think of the Brotherly Love Finance Company? <laughs> it stinks. <laughs> Now, 
Thank you, thank you, Don Wilson. And now here's a man who is one of our oldest customers. He just borrowed $10,000 from us without security, Mr. Harry Von Zell. Will you tell our listeners how we've treated you, Harry? <laughs> What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? No, you have. And now, Mr. Bill Goodwin, another of our clients. Mr. Goodwin, will you tell us your frank opinion of the Brotherly Love Finance Company? Well, certainly. I'll be glad to. <laughs> it's doing a magnificent... Uh, mag it's doing a nif... Mag uh, it's doing a magnificent... I never can pronounce those small words. <laughs> Go look it up in the dictionary. It's the word that comes after magnanimous circumlocutionary. <laughs> You have just heard what four of our satisfied customers have to say about us. No other jerks can make this statement. <laughs> and now it's time to sing our theme song. Would uh, um, you gentlemen care to join us? Why, well, certainly, sir. It's a pledge. It's a pledge. Uh, never mind. Never mind. We'll handle it. I'd... All right. Here we go with a brotherly love finance company quartet. <laughs> We loan it to guys in need. You pay it. Oh, yes, indeed. Money. We'll get you out of the red. Just leave your right arm and head. Money. If you haven't got the zone, don't be blue. Come right in and we will take good care of you. If you're behind in your rent, we charge 33%. Mola. We'll put a nice round hole right in your head. No reference, nothing inside. inside. Just leave your eye teeth behind. Happy. If you're looking for some cash to build a house, as for Joe, you couldn't find a nicer louse. Ha ha ha! Ha ho ho! ho. <laughs> I'm Joe. How do Joe? How do you do? He's Joe. young lady whose voice thrills millions on her own program and whom you have heard countless times on your own radio show. No anniversary command performance would be complete without this lovely songstress. And nothing could be more appropriate for this occasion than the anniversary song sung by Dinah Shaw.
That was beautiful, Dinah. I've been having a little argument with Don Wilson here. You know how announcers are always trying to sneak in a commercial. I told him it was out of the question. This is neither the time nor the place, but he insists that he has something special worked out with some of our guests. Now, I don't want to be stubborn, so I'll, I'll just leave it up to you out there. Shall we give this boy a chance to peddle his words? Well, that's all I wanted to know. Oh, Pete, Pete Hayes. Yes, yes, what's up, Mr. Wilson? Uh, I want you to help me sell Hubba Hubba. <laughs> Yipe. <laughs> Are they selling that stuff now? <laughs> well, it shouldn't be difficult with Clark Gable singing. Now, get ready, everybody. This is going to be a Don Wilson production with Ginny Sims and Pete Hayes, featuring the romantic baritone of Clark Gable. <laughs> Good evening, friends. Do you have fatigue suit droop? <laughs> Does your helmet liner fit different lately? <laughs> then listen to what some folks say about hubba, hubba, hubba. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to town hall tonight. <laughs> well, sir, nothing very exciting happened to me on the way to the studio, except that I saw a friend of mine outside who informed me that a friend of his met a mosquito who stung Frank Sinatra and lost blood on the deal. <laughs> That's why current rumor has it that Frankie Sinatra will soon be taking hubba, hubba, hubba. And not only that... Don't you, you think I'm an old man, eh? Well, perhaps I am suffering from a sort of a loss of memory. For instance, last night... I put my pants to bed and hung over a chair all night. <laughs> but believe me, that's the only reason why I am taking <laughs> And what's more? Mr. Wilson, sir, this is the Army Air Force, sir. When the going gets difficult, don't lie down. Lift your head, sir. Tote that bar. Get a little hubba hubba. You come on. You do hubba hubba. Hubba hubba comes in six delicious sizes. Gallon, quart, pint, dram, drip, and droop. And now, through the courtesy of our sponsors, we present the golden baritone voice of Clark Gable singing Meadowland. Ginny. Ginny, I, I, I'm getting nervous. I'm afraid I can't do it. You've got to, Mr. Gable. Hubba Hubba is counting on you. Oh, but it's such a difficult number. Suppose I crack up in the middle of it. Don't even think of it. Yeah, all right, all right. Pete, maybe you ought to start me off just to give me the key. Okay, Mr. Gable. Polyushka, poly, hey! Polyushka, poly, hey! Yes, you get right. Yes, the cross they offer me get right. Pull. That was great, Don Wilson, Clark Gable, Ginny Sims, and Peter Lind Hayes. I can almost forgive you for that impersonation of me. And now that we've touched lightly on the more serious type music with that rendition of Meadowland, let us explore further the serious vein by calling on a man who has done much to promote a wider appreciation of the cultural attainments of the human species and whose mark will long be felt on classical music. He can truly be called the patron of the arts, Jimmy Durante. Seeking my favorite diversion last night and feeling in the pink, I steps into my plush upholstered handsome. With my two footmen commanding the poop deck and my Arabian steeds going at a gentle trot, we approach the theater marquee, and what happens? The red carpet is rolled out. My two footmen descend from the poop deck. They open the door, and I steps out. Look 
woken up from the gutter, I said. <laughs> Who told you to remove the running board? <laughs> Picking myself up and ignoring the stairs of the hoi Palu, I makes my entrance gallantly into the diamond horseshoe. Removing my top hat, my nylon gloves, my skunk muffler, and my pet ladder goulashes with the neon buttons. I looks around. Mrs. Van Scaller is whispering to Mrs. Murray Hill. Mrs. Murray Hill is whispering to Mrs. Susquehanna. And what are they saying? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it Superman? No, they shouted, it's a bum. <laughs> You see, a vicious rumor has been circulated. Just because I work in a saloon, they say I'm not fit to mingle in any other circle. That's ridiculous. Nightclubs are just a Mr. Hyde part of me. You have yet to meet the Dr. Jerkle. I'm Durante, the patron of the arts, an opera critic, and a man of parts. Last week, I went to the opera. I love it. All but one scene. That's where the 350-pound soprano sings to the baritone. She sings, Take me in your arms and hold me close. By the hole of close, the bum would have to be curved like a banana. <laughs> Those opera lovers, all rave at Handel's Largo. I heard, I heard better music written by Umbria. Now, what I say may sound absurd, but believe me, it's true. I've seen every opera, and I'll name them for you. Tales of the Vienna Rules, Madame Buttermilk, The Sextet from Leachy Nuts, <laughs> and The Quartet from Rigor Mortis. <laughs> I coach sopranos and tenors in their parts, cause I'm Durante, the patron of the arts. Now, just the other day, they held a meeting at the Metropolitan in the cellar. They said, Durante, we're in a hole. You've got to help us out. <laughs> Stepping up on a soapbox, left over from Rigoletto, I said, gentlemen, let's analyze this. Now take Romeo and Juliet. Romeo has to leave Juliet. But does he say, shushu, baby? No. In opera, he says, I have but a moment to spend with you. A moment, my dear, to spend with you. A moment, my spend, a moment to spend. A moment, 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 a moment. He's got one moment to spend and he's taken three hours to tell her about it. <laughs> why, that bum is making a federal case out of it. <laughs> then she says, I will give you a kiss, my love. A burning kiss upon the lips. A burning kiss, a kiss, a kiss upon the lips. A burning kiss, a kiss, a kiss, a kiss, a kiss upon the lips. A burning kiss. By the time he's ready to kiss her, the fire is out. <laughs> so I said, gentlemen, to save the opera, get yourself new lyrics that have style and renown. Like pistol pack and mama, lay that pistol down. They all gave thanks from the bottom of their hearts. To Durante, the patron of the arts, a Kamasura, Durante, the patron of the arts. Thank you, Jimmy. But that's enough of the classics for now. Sometimes the best laid plans go wrong. For this special birthday show tonight, we'd plan something perhaps a little ambitious, but certainly worthwhile. A short dramatic playlet directed by Ernst Lubitsch and combining the histrionic talents of Greer Garson and Orson Welles. Everything was all set. In fact, the final rehearsal was in progress at Miss Garson's home yesterday afternoon. Director Lubitsch threw Orson the cue, and who spoke up but Jack Benny? Oh, Greer, is it all right if I have some of these walnuts here? Oh, go ahead. Help yourself, Jack. Thanks. Hmm. Big ones. <laughs> Jumbos. Now, Greer, aren't you too awesome? If you both turn to page 12 in the script, we will proceed. <laughs> Boy, these, these nuts are good. <laughs> now, Greer, you are a wealthy society girl who is married to a famous New York... <laughs> F. <laughs> 
famous New York stockbroker. And that's you, Orson. Thanks. But he is not in love with you, Gria. And as the French say, it is a marriage of convenience. <laughs> that was a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Benny, will you stop eating those nuts? Greer said I could. Anyway, Mr. Lubitz, I don't want to sit around here like a bump on a log. If I, if I can't have the lead in the play, isn't there something I can do? All right, all right. If it makes you happy, you can play the part of the butler. The butler? Okay. Here's the script. Thanks. Now, remember, Greer, you are the wife. Orson, you are the husband who doesn't understand her, and Jack? I'm the butler whom Greer really loves. <laughs> you are the butler, that's all. <laughs> Okay, okay. Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> All right, Leah. Now start the scene. Remember, your husband is two hours late for dinner, and you are a nervous wreck. Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. Go ahead. Call for the butler. Yes. <clears throat> oh, Smedley. Smedley. Yes, madame. Mm, Smedley, yet. <laughs> what is it, madame? Are you sure my husband hasn't phoned? No, madame. Oh, that's strange. He said he'd be back at... What time is it, Smedley? Half past eight. <laughs> Shall I serve dinner, madame? <laughs> no, Smedley. No, I'm much too upset to eat. I think I'll go to a movie. What's playing in the village? George Washington Slept Here, starring Jack Benny. <laughs> That's not in the script. Read the lines that are written, please. Well, it doesn't hurt to give my picture a plug. It doesn't change the plot any, does it? For heaven's sake. Read what's written. All right, all right. Give me that again, Greer. Okay. Uh, no, Smedley, I'm much too upset to eat. I think I'll go to a movie. What's playing in the village? Heaven Can Wait. How's that? Much better. And George Washington slept here. It's a double feature. <laughs> yeah. Jack, Jack, please. All right, I'll start over again. Shall I serve dinner, madame? Uh, no, Smedley, no. I'm much too upset to eat. I think I'll go to a movie. Is one of my pictures playing in the village? There can't be three features on one bill. Shut up. Now, Gria, at this point, the husband enters the room. Ready, Austin. Make your entrance, please. Right. <clears throat> Good evening, darling. So sorry I'm late. Oh, Ronald, you're always late and you're always sorry. It's been like this for months. What has come between us? If I only knew, perhaps we could work things out. It's nothing, my dear. It's just that I've been so busy late at the office. Let's forget it. Dinner is served. Oh, pardon me, I came in too soon, Mary. <laughs> oh, I can't understand it, Ronald. We must come to some understanding. This can't go on forever. Gwen, let's be adult about the whole thing, shall we? Every night it's the same argument, this constant nagging, nagging, nagging. I tell you, I've been working at the office. Oh, but I phoned your office, and they said you left at two this afternoon. Well, I had business at the bank. Besides, I forgot where I parked my car. <laughs> Some genius can't even find his car. <laughs> Jack, stop interrupting. Continue, Greer. Oh, it's no use, Ronald. I know you're lying. Look at you. Everything you say and everything you do gives you away. Now, Gwen. What's that in your collar? Is it lipstick? It ain't ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, please. Well, I don't want to stand around here like a dope. You've got a line right now. Say it. Oh, yes. Beg pardon. Madame, dinner is served. Jack, don't use such sick accent. You should talk. <laughs> dinner is served. Ah, dinner. Come, Gwen. We're not having dinner, Ronald. Not until we've reached a definite understanding. I'm hungry. Oh, Ronald, I can't go through another day of this uncertainty. I must know. Do you love me or not? Of course I love you. You're lying, Ronald. Lying. Very well, then I am lying. Gee. You might as well know the truth, Gwen. I've never loved you. Never. That must be nuts. <laughs> and if you weren't so stupid, you'd have known it a long, long time ago. Oh, Ronald, Ronald, what are you saying? Oh, my goodness, Gee. I married you for your money. That's all money. Everybody else knew it. If you weren't such a silly, blind little fool, you'd have realized it yourself. Oh, stop, Ronald. Stop. Well, Gwen, now you know how things stand between us, and the sooner you divorce me, the happier I'll be. No, no, I never divorce you, Ronald. I couldn't live without you. I couldn't. I couldn't. Tears, <laughs> tears, woman's tears. Oh, stop the dramatics. Ronald! I'm moving to my club, Smedley. Pack my clothes. I wouldn't touch your dirty clothes. <laughs> Rat. 
Jack, Jack, stick to the lines. <laughs> You're the butler. All right, I'm the butler. I don't care. Continue, Austin. Awesome. Well, goodbye, Gwen. I'm going to the club. Our attorneys can get together tomorrow. Oh, don't go, Ronald. Please, don't Stop go. Stop hanging on to me. I won't give you up. I won't. Stop I it, won't. I say. Let go of me. No, no. Then take that. <laughs> That's the last straw. Take off your coat, Austin. Uh, Jack, Jack, that's only a play. Play nothing. Pep God, oh, put up those dukes, Ralph. Well. <laughs> Jack, Jack, listen. Don't behave yourself. You can't be in the play. The heck with the play. If you think I'm going to stand by and see this cad strike the woman I love. The woman you love? Yes, girl. You might as well know it now. I've been crazy about you for years. Oh, Jack, please. I don't care if the whole world knows it. I love you, Gears. I've never loved anyone. I know you will never feel the same way about me, so I'll walk out of your life forever. But before I go, kiss me. <laughs> Goodbye, my love. Well, uh, now I know why they call them the Waukegan Wolf. <laughs> And so you see why we don't have our play for you tonight. I just noticed a good friend of mine over on the other side of the room, and since the Armed Forces Radio Service comes under his jurisdiction as Chief of Public Information of the War Department, I think he should say a few words. During the past war, he was a combat man and was better known to the men who served under him in the 7th Corps as Lightning Joe. I'd like to introduce him to all of you. Lieutenant General J. Lawton Collins. Thank you, Mr. Barrymore. I want to voice my personal appreciation to you people in Hollywood and the entertainment world for the many hours you have given to command performance and the other programs of the Armed Forces Radio Service. When I was on duty with troops overseas, it was a pleasure during moments of relaxation to turn in our armed forces radio stations and hear the programs of American radio. The spirit and the cooperation which you people gave to this enterprise was all important to the success that the armed forces radio service has achieved. The mission of our uniformed men and women today to keep the peace so dearly won, has carried them to far corners of the world. To assist them in this mission, the Armed Forces Radio Service plays a vital role. The entertainment and the news programs brought to them by Armed Forces Radio Service keeps alive that vital contact with home. There is no place for a feeling of loneliness if high morale is to be maintained. I am happy to say that AFRS, along with our other forms of communication, has made the troops overseas feel that they are in touch with the people at home. I know I speak for all our men and women in uniform when I say congratulations to all of you on this fifth anniversary of the Armed Forces Radio Service. May you enjoy many more. Thank you, General Collins. Uh, 
In honor of this fifth anniversary of Armed Forces Radio Service, we've prepared an operetta starring Judy Garland, Danny Kay, and Lawrence Melchior. <laughs> it's the story of two young honeymooners who have been sitting for days in the waiting room of the Minneapolis Railroad Station, unable to get reservations on a train. Well, it's all very tragic, but let Danny Kay tell us all about it. As the scene opens, the boy and girl, sung by Judy and me, have just gotten up from the bench to go and plead again with the ticket man, played by Lauritz Melchior. On with the opera. Curtain overture! <laughs> Won't you please give us two tickets from Minneapolis to St. Paul? We would like them soon because our honeymoon is being wasted in the Union Station. Just two little tickets from Minneapolis to St. Paul. From Minneapolis to St. Paul is positively all. The chance. One lower berth. No, no. One upper berth. No, no. We'll sleep on the floor. No, no. I can help you if you want to get to St. Paul this season. You'll have to get a priority, and a marriage ain't a good reason. <laughs> we are stuck in the Union Station for <laughs> six months and this. Oh, and the blessed events are pass out cigars. We will name our children after Pullman cars. Oh, Pullman cars, oh, Pullman cars. They name their kids after Pullman cars. Pullman cars pass out cigars. We'll name our kids after Pullman cars. The adjutant has two tickets on the Cannonball Express. The Cannonball? <laughs> Cannonball is running great, trying to make connections with the nickel plate. The nickel plate running fine, trying to make connections with the old Sioux line. And the old Sioux line keeps to the rail, trying to make connections with the Royal Mail. And the Royal Mail trying to see the Atchison Topeka and the Santa Fe. And then the Santa Fe, nothing slow, trying to keep up with the B&O. The B&O runs like a fountain, trying to make connections with Iron Mountain. Then Iron Mountain is really terrific, trying to keep up with the Southern Pacific. The old SP running like well, trying to make connections with the M and St. L. The M and St. L. I must confess, is trying to keep up with the Hartford Express. The Hartford Express is going insane, trying to make connections with the Boston and Maine, and then the Boston and Maine beats them all, trying to make connections with the Cannonball. The Cannonball's running fine, trying to make connections with that old The adjutant just canceled his tickets on the cannonball. Oh, oh, darling, at last we're getting on a train. Yes, darling, at last we're getting on a train. Just one minute, young man. A word of warning. Adjutant, I will please refrain from running water while the train is standing in the station. I love you. Ah, oh, darling, we're off to St. Paul. 
Time's running short, and we have yet to call on the man whose regular appearances for five years before the AFRS microphone have done so much to make command performances the greatest show in radio history. Here, men, is the one and only Bing Crosby. I'm glad I have some fans left. Oh, of course you have, Bing. Of course you have. Why... We had a little popularity contest out our way only last week. It's true, you, you didn't win, but you came in second. Well, that isn't bad. That's good. Who came in first? Carmen Lombardo. <laughs> <laughs> well, naturally, Carmen Lombardo won. Look how many votes he's got right in his own family. <laughs> well, you mustn't let this situation get you down, Bing. You'll start worrying all the time, and pretty soon, the first thing you know, your hair will start falling out. That'll be the lightest fall of you. <laughs> Don't think of your career so constantly. Develop some other interests. Why don't you settle down and raise a few children? A few children? <laughs> Man, I got closets full of them. <laughs> Good, good. There's nothing like kids, Bing. <clears throat> That's right, Lionel. When worst comes to worst, they can always take care of me in my old age. You mean they don't? They report... <laughs> <laughs> they are reporting to Lockheed Monday morning. I <laughs> well, I guess I better be getting along now, Bing. But before I do, would you do me a favor? Anything. Will you sing a song for me? One of my favorites. I'd be glad to, Lionel, if I know it. Oh, you know it all right. Matter of fact, it came out when you were right in your prime, Bing, during the panic of 1907. <laughs> it's called Dear Old Girl. Oh, yes, I know it well, Lionel. If the charioteers will help me out, we shall tap it right here now. Above you, dear old girl, he speaks of how I love you. My blinding tears are falling as I dream of my. And my broken heart is 
is calling, calling for you. Dear old, if I could just hold your child. Again in my arms, then life would be complete. My blinding tears are falling as I dream. And my broken heart is calling, calling for you. was a wonderful climax for our birthday party tonight. Yes, men, the candles are burning low, the cake's almost gone, and five years of Armed Forces Radio are now behind us. We've enjoyed being here tonight, and we regret that not all of the entertainers who have contributed on your shows could join in this anniversary celebration. I feel that I speak for them, too, and for all of us in the industry, in expressing our thanks to all of you for requesting us to appear from time to time. Keep those letters coming to Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA, and we'll do our best to continue sending you the music and laughter of America. This is Lionel Barrymore wishing you all the best of everything on Earth and saying goodbye. United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.